fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. men gathered around the campfires in the early days of the western United States. Stories were told of the masked rider of the plains, and these stories have come down to us through the generations. No one could match his strength and courage, his daring or resourcefulness. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! Come waiting on the trail ahead! Fire, Silver! Away! The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding toward the town of Reed's Ferry when suddenly the masked man's great white stallion reared high. <laughs> Steady, old fellow. Steady there. What's the trouble? There, Snake. What? You see him? Right. I'll get him. You hit him. That fixes him, old fellow. Nice shooting, stranger. Get up in. Hello. Seen you coming and seen that mask you're wearing. Whoa, whoa, fellow, whoa. So I decided it'd be safer to pull up behind them trees till you got by. You thought I was an outlaw, huh? Sure. I knew it the second I seen you. Then why show yourself? <laughs> well, you wouldn't get much off me even if you did hold me up. When I seen how neat you plugged that rattler, I figured maybe you was just the kind of fellow I've been looking for. How's the engine? He pretty good with the shooting iron? He is. Why? How would the two of you like to make yourselves some cash? How? Working for me. What kind of work? You ain't particular, are you? I might be. Hey, <laughs> savvy. Kind of careful, ain't you? Well, if the law's after you, I don't blame you. But you don't have to worry about me none. As long as you can shoot like you just showed me, I ain't going to ask no questions. But I am. I still want to know what you'd expect us to do. Well, maybe if you knew who I was, you wouldn't be so curious. All right. Who are you? My handle's Jorgen. Ever hear me before? I have. <laughs> and there ain't many that haven't heard of me, I reckon. What do you hear? And you've set yourself up as top man in this part of the country. Uh-huh. Anything else? But that you ran into somebody who doesn't scare. Yeah? Who's that? Bart Fraser. For a stranger, you seem to know quite a lot. I made it my business to find out certain facts. I see. What'd you have in mind? Hiring out to whichever one of us would pay your best wages? What do you think? I ain't interested in guessing. But if that's what you were planning, maybe I'd better give you a tip. Yes? Don't make the mistake of joining up with the losing side. Bart's as good as licked right now. Won't be long till he'll have to clear out. And you'll take over his range, huh? <laughs> sure. What I started to say was that when Bart does have to clear out, it's going to be mighty hot for anybody that's sided with him. If he proves too much for you to handle... He won't. He's got a sizable crew. He did have, you mean. But he ain't no more. When Bart come down sick, they kind of lost their nerve. Bart's ill, you say? 
I thought you knew what was going on here. I heard the talk when we rode through here a month ago, but this must have happened since then. Uh Uh-huh, it did. He ain't sick now, of course, but he's mighty feeble. Reckon his boys figured there weren't no use in fighting for somebody that wasn't able to fight for himself. So they left him, huh? Some just up and quit. And some I hired away. Now, what do you think? (laughs) You still figure there's any chance of me losing? I do. Eh? How do you figure that? We'll let you find out for yourself. But I just... You see, Jorgen, you made two mistakes. Eh? In the first place, Tonto and I are not outlaws. Your mask? For reasons of my own. And in the second place, we wouldn't fight for you because we're on Bart's side. Why, you... Now, clear out. You was just pumping me for information. Right. You'll be sorry for this, stranger. We'll take our chances. It don't pay to cross me. And I won't be long till you're finding it out. I said on your way. You ain't giving me orders. No? Then maybe this will convince you. Don't shoot. No, I'm going. Get up, back. Come on. Get up, boy. Get up. Get up, boy. Get up. Him, him change mine heap fast. The worst part of it is that there's plenty of truth in what he told us. He's got better than an even chance to drive Bart out of the district. Me not know you on feller's side. On Bart's? Huh. To tell the truth, Kimasabe, this is the first I knew it myself. Oh. Come, we're paying a call. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Hurry, old fellow. Bart Fraser, although on the road to recovery, was too weak for anything but the easiest work. After his evening meal, he left the table and sank into his favorite chair with relief. Oh, gosh, honey, I, I'm just plumb tired out. You've been trying to do too much before you're well again, Bart. You should take it easier. Here, let me put this pillow behind your back. There. Thank you. Well, I don't know who'll do the work around here if I don't. Well, if it can't be done, it can't be, that's all. Just let it go. You know what that'd mean? I know. I might just as well admit I'm beat. Well, don't think that way, Bart. The minute you do, then you are beat. Don't know what good thinking any other way would do me. Well, can't never tell. If I still had a crew, I'd show Jorgen a few things. Doggone at me, the more I think of how them yellow pole cats quit just because I was ailing, the madder I get. It was just the chance Jorgen was waiting for. But what can he do? I got a good idea. What? Go after that herd of shorthorns I bought. He knows they're purebreds, and he knows I paid out more to get them than I could afford. Now, Bart, you're just imagining things. Huh? He couldn't steal them. Why, he'd be jailed. Who said anything about stealing? But that's of what... Of course, he couldn't take them for himself. But he could fix it so as I'd lose them, couldn't he? How? Why, just by scattering them through the hills, that's how. I'd be lucky to get half of them back, even with a full crew to hunt them out. I know it, and he knows it, and I'd be willing to bet plenty that's just what he's figuring on. But they're guarded. Who by? You said you hired a cowboy the other day. Oh, him. He's just a kid. If my crew hadn't quit, I'd never have hired him. Don't know what use he'd be in a fight. Things do look bad. If I'd only had a son to back me up. Oh, Bart, please. Well, I can't help feeling that way, can I? I know. But you've talked about it so much, you've made poor Betty feel she weren't wanted. I think that's why she went visiting this last time. Where'd she go? I told you. To Kate Bell's at Riverdale. Hmm. I do wish I'd try to be nicer to her. She's done everything she knew how to please you. Why, she can ride and rope and she can shoot better than most cowboys. And she learned just because she thought it'd help to make up to you for her not being a boy. Half the time you act as though you didn't know she was alive. Well, that ain't so. It is, Bart. You just don't realize it. You talk like I didn't have no use for my own daughter. Bart, I know you love her. It's just... Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Well... You get impatient with her. And you say things like you did just now about wishing you had a son. And, well, how could she help feeling bad? She tell you these things? Of course not. But her mother knows what her daughter's thinking. Well, if she was so anxious to please me, why didn't she stay home till things got better? Instead of traipsing over to Kate's. Well, if you didn't want her to go, you should have told her so. Mm. When's she coming home? Been gone a week. I don't suppose she'll stay much longer. You heard from her yet? No, but she'll ride pretty soon. Well, I reckon I'd better turn in. Got plenty to do tomorrow. Got the pump to fix, and... Who's that? Didn't I hear somebody ride up? Sounded like it. Well, who could... Come in! <laughs> Master. You... Don't be alarmed. I'm not an outlaw. You're one of Jorgen's men. I'm not, but I've talked to Jorgen, and that's why I'm here. What do you want? Jorgen said your crew would quit you, that you were alone. I just about am. 
But what's it to you? Just about. Then you have got someone working for you? A kid to ride herd on my short horns, if you call that help. I see. You ain't told me what you're after. I came to tell you not to give up yet. I know Jorgen wants to drive you out of the district, but don't leave. I never intended to. Good. But why are you saying that? Tonto and I'll do all we can to help you. Tonto? An Indian friend of mine. But who are you? Maybe you've heard of me, and maybe you haven't. If you have, well, this should answer your question. So what I'll is... see you again. Oh, wait. Well, I never... May, what was that he dropped on the table? A bullet. A bullet of silver. Huh? Look, it is silver. Come on, silver, come on! Silver? You hear that? He called his horse Silver. Mark. May, can't you guess who that hombre was? Who? The Lone Ranger. Leaving Bart's ranch house, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the valley where Bart's herd of shorthorns were being grazed. They spoke to the young cowboy who was guarding the herd and then made camp a short distance away. We're at a disadvantage, Tonto. There's nothing we can do until Jorgen makes his move. Isn't that right? But I'm convinced this is the danger point. If Bart loses those short horns, he's beaten. I understand he not only sold most of his other cattle to get them, but mortgaged his property as well. Hmm. There's something that's been bothering me. What that? Did you notice anything strange about that cowboy we spoke to? Him just boy. Well, there was something else. Me no savvy. Well, never mind. I may be wrong. The idea I had seems impossible and probably is. Anyhow, just now we've got other things to worry about. Uh. One of us must keep an eye on Jorgen. We can't let him catch us unguarded. Me do that. Will you? Uh. Good. And I'll divide my time between watching the herd and Bart's home. Just possible that Jorgen will strike there, although I doubt it. Uh. If Jorgen's to be beaten, we can't miss a trick. The following day, Sheriff Miller rode from town to Bart's ranch. Bart was just leaving the house as the sheriff reined up. Oh, oh boy, oh. Uh, uh. Afternoon, Bart. Well, howdy, Sheriff. What brings you out this way? Well, a couple of things, Bart. Where's your wife? Inside. Step in. Thanks. <laughs> Here's a sheriff to see you, May. <laughs> I reckon you've been breaking the law again. <laughs> oh, go on with you, Bart. <laughs> Howdy, Sheriff. <laughs> Nothing for you to worry about, Mom. Here's a letter for you. Postmaster mentioned it, and as long as I was coming to see Bart anyhow, I thought I might as well bring it along. Oh, that was kind of you. Will you excuse me while I read it? Sure. You was coming to see me anyhow, you said? Yes, Bart. Jorgen was into my office. He told me something I thought I'd better ask you about. Yeah. He said you'd hired a couple of crooks to work for you. <laughs> said that, did he? Mm-hmm. Said one of them was masked and the other was a redskin. Nothing in it, is there? <laughs> sure, I hired them. Huh? But they ain't crooks. Then what did You'd he... You'd never guess who the masked fellow was in a million years. No? The Lone Ranger. Oh, you're local. Nope. I seen one of the silver bullets that fellow shoots. Heard what he called his horse, too. I didn't see who was with him. But if you say it was a redskin, then it just fits in with what he told me. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> so you can just go back and tell Jorgen he's up again more than he figured on. Bart, I'll do that. And just between the two of us. Yeah? If you ever get anything on, Jorgen, so as I can jail the coyote, just you let me know. It'll be a pleasure. I'll do that same. Well, good day. Good day. Good day, Mom. Good day. So who's the letter from? It ain't from Betty, is it? What? Well, honey, what's ailing you? You're acting like you just had bad news. Bart, this letter is from Kate Bell. Yes? She wants to know if Betty can visit her. Wants to know if... You know, that's silly. You've read it wrong. Betty is visiting her. Read it yourself, Bart. That's just what she says. But, uh, but I don't savvy. Bart, it means Betty ain't there. It means she never has been there. But may I... Bart, what's become of her? <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. At Jorgen's ranch, his men had assembled in the bunkhouse to receive their orders. I wonder what he's got on his mind, huh? Finally, Jorgen himself entered. He is. And we're all here, boss. What's up? That's what I come to tell you. I want you all to listen close. Because this is important. We're we listening. First off, I reckon you all know why I hired you. <laughs> There's going to be a fight? I don't think so. But I've got a job for you. And it's just possible there might be. Well, in case there is, don't forget you're all drawn fighting wages. Sure. And what's the job? Well, you're going to drive them purebred cows of Frazier's into the hills. That sounds easy. Yeah. Maybe it is, and maybe it ain't. But anyhow, I want a good job done. Don't just scatter them and let it go at that. Keep after them till they spread so many different ways they can't never be found. Mm -hmm. But ain't you going along? I am. But I can't be with you all at once. Mm -hmm. How about the law? Any risk there? There ain't. That's why I chose today. The sheriff's already been to Bart's place once, and he ain't likely to ride that way again. Bart himself ain't likely to be on hand. The only witness there'll be is that young cowboy he hired. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll handle the kid. Yeah. Well, there's just one way to handle him. How's that? See that he can never talk. What? Drill him? Just so. Oh, now, look, boss. Well? If we just scattered the herd, then the Lord never be able to prove there's any more in a stampede that happened by itself. But if there's a killing atop it, then it'll point straight to you. What of it? Well, uh... let the law suspicion I'm behind it. Let anybody that wants to suspicion the same. But as long as it can't be proved on me, suspicions don't scare me none at all. Hmm. Well, if you don't care, I reckon we don't. How about it, fellas? Yeah. All right with me. And there's nothing more needs to be said. Saddle up. We start in riding right now. Masked man rode into camp. He found Tonto waiting for him. Oh, oh, that's over. Oh, what? Oh. What is it, Tonto? What brought you back here? Jorgen Fellers ride. Yes? Them stampede heard. When? Heap soon. They're on the way now? Huh? I know this is worse than I'd expected. What matter? Remember talking about the young cowboy Bart hired? Huh? That cowboy is Betty Fraser. Oh. When we talked to her, I was puzzled. Then I didn't know why. Now I know it was because, in spite of her disguise, she didn't handle herself as a man would. And that heap strange. Not so strange when you know the facts, Kimasabi. Bart was always disappointed because he had a daughter instead of a son. Betty, knowing this, taught herself all the accomplishments a boy would have mastered. She can shoot and ride and rope. Mm. When her father's crew quit him, she told her parents she was leaving to visit a friend. Instead, she disguised herself and returned. Her heap brave. She's taking this way to prove to Bart that she can help him as much as a son would have done. Ah. But this means that she's in danger of her life. How you know this? Betty told her parents she was visiting a girl named Kate Bell. Today, a letter was received which proved she'd never gone there. Then it came to me what was strange about that cowboy. And what we do? You're riding to town at once. Here, Scout. Get the sheriff and a posse. Bring them as quickly as you can. Time to do it. And in the meantime, I'll do what I can to help save the herd. Get going. Uh. Get him up, Scout! Yeah. Get him up! Come on, Silver! Hail, Silver! Away! Jorgen and his men reached the herd before the Lone Ranger and... Here they are! <laughs> Just waiting for it. When we get through, they'll be combing short horns out of the hills for ten years to come. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for that cowboy. Anybody see him? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, wait a second. I think I do. Where? Look over to your right. I don't Sure, see there he is. And he's seen us, too. He's hightailing for them rocks. He heading for cover. Yeah, they, they look at him. He's got off his horse, and he's got his rifle with him, too. Don't bother with the herd till you get him. 
That's the first thing to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! That bullet comes so close, I could hear it whiz by. That's some shooting. Watch out! We better hunt for cover ourselves. Boss, we're just giving that fellow good targets to shoot at. Rain up! Whoa, 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 whoa. Find cover and fire back. Get that hombre. <laughs> Unaware that it was a girl, not a man, who was firing so accurately, Jorgen's men sought cover and returned her fire. The first body left her unharmed. But it could only be a matter of moments before one of their bullets found its mark. Suddenly a great white horse broke from cover. One side of the valley and raced toward the rocks where Betty Fraser was hidden. Come on, old fellow! Hurry, boy! There's that masked man! Bring him down! Let him have it, fellas! He's moving almost too fast to aim at. Keep firing. Empty your guns. Riding like the wind, the great horse Silver raced within gunshot of the desperate outlaws. But his blinding speed made him a phantom figure, a difficult target, and always the Lone Ranger urged him on. Keep undercover. You, you come to help me? I did, Betty. What? Now don't waste time denying who you are. Just listen to what I have to say. But, 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 Wait, you can't remain here. There's too many of them, and our ammunition is limited. If we'll leave, they'll stampede the herd. Not until they finish us off first, so they'll not have witnesses. Y- you mean to run first? Yes. My horse is slow. We won't take your horse. We'll ride double on silver. Ride double? Then we'd never get away. We don't want to. I don't understand. I've sent a friend of mine for the law, but it'll be an hour before it can reach here. In the meantime, we've got to keep Jorgen after us. But, but... We'll ride just fast enough to stay out of gunshot. But slowly enough, so they'll think they still have a chance to catch us. It can't be done. Here, don't argue. Just get in that saddle. What? Hip with you. Uh, Teddy, old fellow. Hip. All right, Silver. Come on. Come on. Jorgen saw the Lone Ranger and Betty ride away, as if to escape, and... They're making a break for it. They're heading up the valley. Get your horses after them. They've got to be killed or we're done for. Come on. Ready, fellas? Yeah. Let's go. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up. Jorgen's men were certain that in time, the white stallion bearing a double burden must weaken. In fact, the great horse slowed its pace several times, as though in distress. It's slowing down again. This time we'll catch him, sure. Get up there. Get, get up there. 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 Come on, Silver, come on. There's more riders. I saw them five minutes ago. Oh, There's a paint horse in the lead. Palos, it's the law. That's why you circled back to the valley. Right. Then we'll beat them. But we've got to hold their attention until the law can close in. I'm pulling up by those trees. Get behind cover and start firing. Yes. Oh, oh there, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh. I'm down with you. Fire over their heads. Keep firing, but don't give them a chance to see what's happening until it's too late. Jorgen frantically urged his men to advance on foot. Come on, close in on them. We wait, they'll be gone again. Not me, Adam. We'll go closer till we've picked them off. Me neither. The fools will be dope. Hey, look back at us. What's that? It's the law. we got to clear out of here. We can't. There ain't no place to go. The masked fellows ahead of us and the law's behind. We're cut off. What do we do? Fight it out, man. Nothing to do. I'm giving up. Hey, boy, uh, you yellow I coyotes, you blasted quitters. Why don't you fight? Because we ain't got a chance. Drop your gun. Drop your gun. We got drilled. I'd have fought it out with you if I had anybody to back me. Oh, there. I've waited a long time for something to happen that'd give me reason to arrest you, Jorgen. But a 
reckon it won't have to wait no longer. I would have got And a... this is what I've been waiting for, too. Round up the rest of the skunks, deputy. Sure. Here comes the masked man and that cowboy of mine. Hi there. Oh, oh, Master. Oh, boy. Oh, last, you fellas. We almost caught you. <laughs> you never had a chance, Jorgen. We could have outdistanced you at any time. We kept you following because we knew a posse was on its way. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah? Well, Jorgen, any time you plan to race the Lone Ranger, just let me know. The Lone Ranger? That's where I heard of a horse called Silver before. And we never guessed it. And we were tricked. <laughs> In fine style. Uh, hey, young fella. Yeah? You done your share, I reckon. You got a bonus coming and a job with me as long as you like. Now, how's that? Thanks, Pa. Huh? Meet your daughter, Bart. Betty, take off that hat. There. Well, well, I'll be hogtied. Jorgen, you'll hang as high as a kite. It was a girl you was trying to kill. Oh, I never knew. How could I? Listen, I Sheriff. I reckon you'd hang anyhow, but this will just make it more certain. No, no, no listen Get to me. going. Wait, I, I Come never... on. There's a rope waiting for you to stretch it. And talk won't save you now. Oh, I never know. Oh, 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 pa. Yeah? Uh, are you still sorry I'm not a boy? Betty, I've said a lot of foolish things in the past. And I reckon I'll say a heap more before I cash in. But that won't be one of them. <laughs> and let me tell you something, young un. Yes? Don't never forget to thank your lucky stars the mask man was around. Oh, I couldn't. And as long as you live, don't try a stunt like this again. Just heard as a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.